insane amount of calories today. But it wasn't always this way. You see that face? That is the face of someone who has gone over her calorie deficit and can only eat celery for the rest of the day. <laughs> and if my metabolism were a person, it would have looked like this. I'm not getting enough fuel, so it's time to slow it down. So here's what seven days of eating looked like for me at this point. For breakfast, I would have eggs, bacon, and spinach. For lunch, I would have a grilled chicken breast with some coconut oil, and then I would have a salad with olive oil. For a snack, I would usually have macadamia nuts or pecans, and for dinner, I would typically have a hamburger patty with cauliflower and some butter. I was getting 1,700 calories a day, 10% from protein, 10% from carbs, and 80% from fat. This is called the keto diet, and God forbid I eat over my allowed calories for the day. And I was really craving carbs, but I was also like scared of eating carbs. I was obviously not satisfied with my diet. I decided to check a calorie counter online. Okay, I am a woman. I am 5'4". I wanna get more toned, so I'm gonna say my goal is fat loss. This calculator told me that in order to accelerate my fat loss and get more toned, I needed to be eating 1,600 calories a day and getting 160 grams of protein. I'm also gonna start lifting weights. And I'm doing more cardio. So a typical week of my diet looked like this. For breakfast, I would have whey protein with eggs and spinach and coconut oil. For lunch, I would have grilled chicken breast with broccoli and some butter. For a snack, I would have an apple and venison jerky. And for dinner, I would have salmon, cauliflower, and of course, more butter. At this point, I was getting 1,600 calories a day, 40% from protein, 40% from fat, and 20% from carbs. As you can imagine, at this point, I was fighting constant hunger. I was also tired, like really tired. And my constant cravings persisted. What? On top of all of that, I had slowed my metabolism way down. Oh God, my poor metabolism. I am so sorry. This sucks. And as soon as I ate over my ridiculous calorie deficit, guess what happened? Despite all of my efforts to follow my diet exactly, I wasn't seeing the results that I wanted. Dang it, these jeans used to fit me. So I decided to try something different and take a 180 and do the exact opposite of everything that I was doing. I was high fat, high protein, low carb, meat based, low calorie. So I went low fat, low protein, high carb, plant based, eat in abundance. Aren't low fat diets bad for you? And isn't that too much sugar? Okay, before you freak out, let me explain. With this study done by Physicians Committee researchers and published in JAMA Network Open. A low-fat, plant-based diet increases after-meal burn and improves body weight and insulin sensitivity. Those in the vegan group lowered their body weight by 14 pounds and increased their metabolism by 18.7%. Hey, it's me again. Where are you getting your protein? In terms of protein, Dr. Pam Popper says it best. Really, human protein needs are very, very low. In fact, as little as 2.5% of calories for adults, which means that it's impossible, mathematically impossible, to eat a diet that provides enough calories every day that does not provide enough protein. So as long as I get the adequate amount of calories for my body, I'm also going to get the adequate amount of protein. She's eating again? Finally, time to speed it up a little bit. And now, this is what I eat in a typical week. Let's start with breakfast. Today I'm starting the morning off with watermelon. Watermelon, 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 watermelon. 
Okay, you get the idea. I like having watermelon for breakfast. Watermelon is by far my favorite fruit. But if you're not a watermelon type of person, any sweet, juicy fruit is great for breakfast. Things like papayas, oranges, mangoes, and apples are all great options. Yeah, um, excuse me, it's me again. What if I don't like fruit? Then some great options would be any low-fat plant-based food like oatmeal, steamed potatoes, sweet potatoes, yams, winter squashes, or even millet. Now let's move on to what I eat for lunch during a typical seven day period. For lunch, I've got seven frozen bananas. Mm, that was good. Mm, this is so tasty. So every day for lunch, I love having banana and ice cream. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. So you're eating the same thing for breakfast and for lunch every single day? Do you know Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook? And yes, I promise this is relevant. Mark Zuckerberg is a multi-billionaire. I mean, this guy could literally buy a new Gucci outfit every day for the rest of his life. His clothing options for what to wear every day are endless. But Mark doesn't do this. You know what he does instead? He wears a gray t-shirt every day. He's got a closet of gray t-shirts and that's what he wears. He does this for simplicity. It's one less decision he has to make during the day and it gives him more mental energy to focus on other things. I feel the exact same way about food. Hmm, what should I have for breakfast today? I could have apples, oranges, bananas, dates, grapes, figs, papaya, cherries. Stop, just have watermelon. Instead of being overwhelmed with so many options, I like the simplicity of knowing what I'm gonna eat, knowing that I'm gonna enjoy it, and not having to make any decisions about food. Now, let's move on to snacks. It is 3.30 and I'm kinda hungry, and I'm thinking I'm gonna have pineapple. But I don't have pineapple every day for a snack. What I have for a snack might kind of change each day. Some days it might be orange juice or grapes or cantaloupe. It just kind of depends on what's in season. Now let's look at my dinner. First off, I always have a big leafy green salad with my main meal. Literally my salad is big enough to feed like a family of four. Dinner does kind of vary for me a little bit, but I usually have two types of dinners. One is a potato-based dinner and the other is a rice-based dinner. First, let's look at the potato-based dishes. My first potato dish is a curry potato soup and I'll have this along with some kind of vegetable, usually asparagus or artichokes or Brussels sprouts. My second go-to potato dish is oil-free potato fries, and I'll also have this meal with some kind of vegetable. In this case, it was maple roasted Brussels sprouts. Now let's look at my rice-based dishes. My first dish is a rosemary olive brown rice pasta. And my second brown rice dish is a brown rice vermicelli Thai pasta. And a third rice dinner that I enjoy having is veggie sushi. I'll usually have a potato dinner five times a week and a rice dinner twice a week. Each day of my week is between 2,000 and 2,500 calories and my macros look like this. I'm getting 80% from carbohydrates, 10% from protein, and 10% from fat. And my metabolism is like... I ate an insane amount of calories today. Like the fact that I'm able to eat almost 3000 calories and still maintain my weight is like crazy to me. Especially since I've come from a background of eating 16,000 calories and I feel like I'm more toned now eating 3000 calories. Like what? In fact, eating this way has allowed me to go from thick to thin in six months without exercise and without counting my calories. If you wanna see exactly how I did this, click this video on the screen. Here I share the exact steps that helped me to slim down effortlessly and I'll see you in the next video.